Hey guys, this is A Canuck from No Way and Team, your number one source for awesome, and welcome to Tell Me I'm Wrong. We've got a special guest today. It's Raptor. Say hello. Hola, my friends. So, uh, yeah, it, we've been gone for quite a while. We apologize for not getting a new episode out. Uh, life happens, stuff happens, but the good news is, is we're back, and uh, I've got AK here as well. Hey guys, welcome back. So, yeah, right off the bat, let's start the show with a couple questions uh, to Raptor. First of all, Raptor, um, although I'm, I'm calling you just Raptor, throw out yeah, your, that's perfect. Throw perfect. your name out there uh, <laughs> yeah. so people can know where to find you. And, uh, yeah, tell me a little about yourself. Well, um, I'm basically a gameplay commentator, but I like to give my opinion on YouTube. I like to tell people what I think on not just controversial topics, but also things that I think people should know about and be aware of, not just in the Call of Duty community, but also in life. Absolutely, so guys, think- and you can tell he's a good commentator. He hasn't even said uh or um or thrown a f F-bomb in there yet, so we respect the Raptor. <laughs> so uh, where can people find your channel? Um, you can find my channel at youtube.com backslash I-T-Z-Z, the Raptor. Um, I'm sure you guys will put a link in there, but if you don't, uh, you can just get me there. <laughs> Depends if we like you or not. No, it's all good. Yeah, I know, right? We'll throw a link down. Uh, but yeah, we have lots to talk about. There's been a lot of stuff happening over the last uh, couple of weeks since we had our last episode. And uh, yeah, Raptor couldn't wait to get on the show. He's been asking for a while. So glad we I could know. finally make it happen for him. So uh, right off the bat, guys, I want to talk about Call of Duty because, I mean, that's what we play the most. Um, the latest little topics going on around the Call of Duty universe is uh, microtransactions and what everybody thinks of them. There's, it's kind of controversial. It's kind of funny that Call of Duty is asking you yet again to spend more money. Uh, I know you guys have some takes on this, so fire it off. Um, yeah, I'll go first here. I A lot of commentators have said that you know microtransactions are not fair because, one, they're asking for more money, and then they're also asking you to pay more even if you do have the season pass but the thing i've always thought about the season pass was it just gives you the map packs like that's always what i've thought about it and so i don't think people should be complaining because it's not like they're giving you some unfair advantage or it's a new gun or something that they're giving you it's just like a little camo like come on some people like to party rock man (laughs) and i love people like oh my gosh bacon camo is this so worth it i'm just like i know it looks nasty though so and i come from uh, a guy who bought elite previously um for for the last call of duty and i i really feel ripped off i feel like this whole like elite with like clans and all this extra stuff you're supposed to get just totally went down the drain and they failed definitely yeah i myself you know i'm used to it you know i've been with ea sports since you know 92 93 i guess when i got my first sega genesis and all they do is ever ask for more money recently uh they're very good at it and people seem to constantly do it, and that's why they continue to do this. And I believe that's partially why you know some of these other uh, game companies are coming out and doing the same types of things. You know, charging for DLC content, extra DLC content, charging for the like we said, the skins, the bacon camel. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I know every, say, I know. <clears throat> sorry, AK. I will say that the only reason why these people do this and they throw down. Um, money for it and the reason why call of duty activision slash whoever keeps throwing it out there is because people are buying it so i can't knock them for doing it because yeah i know i mean you really you really can't knock people in the end for doing what they can to make the extra buck and i I do kind of support them in their way of doing it because if there's new dlc people are going to buy it so if they can put it out there they will yeah and again i (laughs) there really isn't anything that they can make right now like man, I've I've seen some terrible map packs. I've seen some terrible zombie maps where they're they're getting to the end of the game cycle, and it's like you know what, we've got nothing. But I can't figure out for the life of me why the people for Black Ops Two won't come out with more game types. I would pay for those. I'd pay for face off maps. I'd pay for Infected again. I'm I, I literally awesome. had a good fifty hours played of Infected with my brother. It was so much fun. I can't stand the, we're not doing that because Infinity War did that, like, discussion. I'm like, guys, it's it worked. It was awesome. Like, yeah, me and AK were busting out some, some face-off uh, Modern Warfare 3 the other day, just absolutely loving it and wondering, like, why can't this be back in Black Ops 2? I'd love to see it. So, why yeah. remove a game type like that that encourages so many people? Like, how many people were playing when we went on to the face-off 2v2 connect? Oh, dude, there's still, there's still tons of people in the 300,000s. Like, exactly, yeah. still playing Modern Warfare 3, you know, and, and specifically the face-off maps. I think in the 2v2, there was over 10,000 people. That's ridiculous. That's more than Crisis 3 has on in an entire time. 
I am still yeah. enjoying Crisis 3, but it is very depressing to look through the servers and see 100 people online. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's a shame. But I will tell you this, especially with the uh, with the face-off playlist, like, if I get online, and I have a full friends list on Xbox Live, 99 people, and if I get on and I have, like, one person online, I will specifically say, I want to play 2v2 face-off, because it, it's just fun. I mean, yeah. it's fun interaction, not only to be one-on-one with a friend, but... It, 2v2 is always great, I think. Dude, there's so many uh, tactics that you get to play. And I oh, can't stand that about Black Ops 2. I feel that every single game mode um, just kind of kind of removes you from that. Like, we we're keep finding that there's nothing more fun than covering each other's backs, having callouts, doing all those things that we like to do. And 2v2, 3v3 really puts that, like, in. And playing multi-team now, which is the closest thing we've got to face-off, <laughs> is getting kind of old. Unfortunately, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's it's really it's really drained me. I know, like I've myself, you know, when I get a chance, like Canuck and uh, Canuck and I are deciding, you know, we're gonna play online tonight. I put in Crisis first because that's what I'm hoping we're gonna play <laughs> because I've been bored of Call of Duty and playing, you know, the same hard points and the same this. I want to, I want I want an objective playlist, you know. I want that face off. I want I want some different options, you know. They need to give us some more some fresh ideas, fresh things to play with. Speaking of Crisis, you're gonna like my next video there, AK. Okay? <laughs> yeah. Me and the mic gun absolutely slaying. So mm. get ready. Alright, so let's move on here, guys. Um ever since the PlayStation had its little press conference and then released a bunch of information about games, not so much about the console, there's been rumors of just flowing everywhere about the seven twenty um, well, the supposed still Xbox 720, they got to call it that. I can't see it being anything else at this point. I can't, I can't see it being no. just Xbox. And they need to... Um, everybody's wondering if they're going to have their own press event or they're just going to hold on here for the next couple months here for E3. Uh, but the biggest rumor over the last couple of weeks was there was this big issue going out there that somehow Xbox was going to eliminate the ability to use, to use games. And, um, and that was kind of shot down on Friday. Uh, reading an article, somebody from inside Microsoft basically said that that's not true. And uh, for me, that's really good to hear because it really would be just a stupid idea in my my like <clears throat> way to way to ruin all the retailers that push your product. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, definitely. I couldn't. I I could see um, Games uh, Stop and EB Games EB just games. throwing their arms right up in the air. <laughs> They they totally did on that. They definitely had some kind of pull. I I can guarantee one of their CEOs, whoever is going over there, going, we're going to have to shut down a company. We have this many sales of all your games. We're able to do this many resales of all your games. What are you doing? You know, like uh, the one thing I think EA did that was smart to make the extra buck, uh, in quotations of course, <laughs> was the uh, you know you you buy the used copy. And then you have to pay for the the online pass. You know, if it came with one yeah, online pass, I'm okay in the with. case, I'm okay with. I'm that. okay with that. Yeah, Myself I think as that's well. Okay. Because you I know, understand and, what a company is trying to do. You're basically recycling their product with no extra amount made on that yeah. player. The, the company that's making the game isn't getting any profit back on the resale, so you have to figure out a way to still get that profit because a game could be sold. I mean, ten times after the first person buys it, for especially sure. with like the older games. Oh, totally. I bought Call of Duty. It, it always happens. I'm always like, oh, I hate this game, and I put, it, I trade it in, and then like I get bored. <laughs> Two months later, you have it again. <laughs> it's nothing to play, and I'm like, I'll spend thirty bucks again. Sure. I yeah. did that last week for Modern Warfare Three, so that we could play, we could play Face Off. <laughs> no jokes. <laughs> oh, so as man. as long as they keep it um, smart. Now I will say this for sure: the digital content is going to happen. EB Games and uh, and any one of the like future shops or Best Buys, all that. Games they're not going to be selling games for for very much longer. There's just, I mean, you can download pretty much any game right now. I still love getting the case. I still love having the the disc. But we live in a generation where every piece of music is downloaded, so it's just going to happen. Yeah, I mean, it, it'll eventually happen. I mean, for me, I like having the hard copy of the game because it feels like I actually have something there. Because I feel like you know, things can always happen online. I mean. Things can crash. I mean, you, you never know what's going to happen if you just buy the game online. So that's kind of why I like the hard copy way to go with games. But in the end, I mean, nobody's in control of it. And eventually it will take the turn towards where music's headed in the last several years. Well, that was where PlayStation had their press conference where they said that uh, you're going to be able to rent any game on the PlayStation Store and it's going to be instant play. It's going to download data while you're playing, which is kind of a crazy concept to me because you're, well, one, you're going to need some decent bandwidth. <laughs> But <laughs> definitely, yeah, it's gonna be cool to pull that off. So, yeah, I definitely interested in that. Um, I don't see everyone going 
towards the full digital content just yet. I I know just like Raptor said, like myself, I love having that physical that physical case. I love lining them all up so I can see exactly what <laughs> I've got, what what I can play. Like music um, was before, literally. Ex- exactly, exactly. I don't know if I'll ever switch over that to that digital uh, for video games unless I've got like a two terabyte hard drive or something ridiculous, you know. Here's the only great thing about going digital. And that's I get the release when everybody else does. None of this West exactly. Coast four hours later. Exactly. Um, yeah. Yeah. I want to play right away. So, okay. Um, awesome guys on the seven twenty. Uh, let's talk sports. It's come on. It's March Madness. Everybody knows what March Madness is. If you don't, oh my gosh, turn a television on. Um, if you don't, you've been playing way too much Call of Duty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's way been some too much massive update uh, upsets already. The best thing about March Madness are the upsets in my mind. I just love how it really doesn't matter what you're seated. Rarely does it ever take place where the number one just cruises through the tournament. And uh, the best part about watching March Madness is looking at the true passion of the players. They're young. They're not signed to multi gajillion dollar contracts, and there's just nothing but emotion in all those games. Yeah. The the only thing I will say is that when like p- picking brackets is one of the most fun things to do in sure. like the NCAA and in any anywhere you go. I mean, people are talking about their brackets all over the place. And upsets make it so hard to choose who's going to win. Cuz I mean, like you talk about Gonzaga going down, Georgetown I had in the final four, New yeah. Mexico goes down. I mean, it's just so unpredictable that perfect brackets just don't happen anymore. I, but the other fit part of that is that I've never seen more crying than you do in the March Madness tournament. <laughs> <laughs> I just I love it when a first seed or second seed or third seed is crushed by somebody that it's like twentieth, and they're just like, I, I can't believe like this Western Flor- or Florida Gulf or something like that. Like, <laughs> yeah. just an unheard of or like um, wasn't wasn't uh, Florida? Was this one of their first appearances? Um, Florida upset. Uh, I think so. Um, I'm not. I'm not sure exactly on the facts there, but yeah. I mean, Florida Gulf. I was impressed with, and I think they just won. Um, I actually they did just win. They beat uh, San Diego. Some, some yeah, San Diego State. And I don't know, I'm, I'm impressed with a lot of the teams that have actually advanced more than I thought they would. I was in Vegas once for March Madness, and I gotta say, I, I, again, as far as basketball, being a fan of basketball, I don't watch a lot of it, but. Um, when I was in Vegas, I've never seen a larger group of people in a giant room checking out all the scores and having every game live and cheering their faces off after every basket. It was fascinating because typically I don't get that excited about it. But man, yeah. people were high fiving and toasting to every single basket made. Yeah, I know. In that environment, yeah. yeah. I went to, uh, if you guys don't have it there where you guys are at, there's this restaurant called Buffalo Wild Wings, and I did a vlog on it on my channel. And it's basically this wings and sports place where everybody goes and you watch the game, and it's all exciting. They have like 50 TVs in this little restaurant. And it was like 10 o'clock in the morning on a Friday. So this one guy at a table, he had two computers out. He had one bracket on one computer and one bracket on the other computer. And literally after every Duke basket, he was like, yeah, let's go, let's go, like really, really, really loud. It was just the funniest thing. (laughs) <laughs> and then like as you can see like all his co-workers start to show up and then the chants get bigger and louder it was it was just one of it's like the one of the greatest things to see yeah man that was your uh, video when you were decked out in the north carolina right yeah yeah top to bottom <laughs> mm-hmm. unfortunately north carolina lost today but can't hey. do anything about it i didn't expect them to go far so that's why they call it march madness you've missed no yep. idea <laughs> no idea awesome well uh back over on the canadian world of things where we're nuts about hockey <laughs> Uh, AK, you're throwing out some some pretty huge trade rumors because the trade deadlines are coming. Yeah, uh, there's been a lot of talk about where Iggy's going. Jerome McGinley from the captain of the Calgary Flames. Uh, there's a few places, Boston, Pittsburgh, Chicago, and I forget the other one off the top of my head here. I've heard but, almost uh, every name. I even heard the Canucks and I laughed. I'm like, there's no way he's being no, set there, you crazy. No, <laughs> he, no. Uh, the Canucks don't need a right wing. They need a center. So, um, I would absolutely love to have him on the Jets, though. That would be a great addition over there. We could use uh, use him for a good playoff push. Uh, I'd be down to trade Jokinen in the deal because, uh, hey, no playoff appearance means no playoff appearance. So, If you ever want to see awkward reporting, uh, just watch the NHL deadline on any one of the networks. Uh, they literally they start at 5 a.m. and they don't stop till 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And it's been really funny the last couple of years because it's a really big deal up here. Uh, people will watch it all day long, no matter where they're at. Except there's one problem: 
no trades happen. And so there's literally like a whole group of reporters being like, um, so what should we talk about? And it's, yeah, it's really funny to watch. Chicago just traded their second round pick to <laughs> Philadelphia for their third round pick. Oh, pending other like, transactions. Straight of the year right there. Yeah. Big straight of the year. <laughs> Hold on, what's that? That's coming in? <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, I'm definitely guilty of watching the trade deadline multiple years. Uh, sometimes, some years have been really good, like really good and a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, in the last couple years, it's been like, <laughs> crickets <laughs> well I mean if you if you guys think you are crazy up there now obviously hockey's the big sport in Canada but here down in the US there's so much hype around the NHL or not NHL NFL <laughs> yeah. deadline I keep wanting to say hockey for some reason I don't know the NFL deadline is like one of the biggest events ever and even more bigger than that is the NBA deadline because there's so many trades that happen with huge stars in the NBA I mean you talk about the huge things that have have been happening with the Lakers this year and all this big stuff and it, it's just one of the greatest things here it's basically the equivalent of the NHL deadline except things actually happen well I know what it is because I, I know when I watch it I love the, being the first guy to know the trade and then getting yeah, on my, yeah. my phone and being like oh my gosh can you believe they freaking traded for that guy mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah it's, it's it's entertaining and like I said I if I if I watch well, I mean the other part about the NFL, the draft day is absolutely massive. Oh yeah, it's oh yeah, huge, huge. Yeah, I would say the draft days for you know NFL and even the NBA, I I find are are really big deals, and I like to watch those, like seeing you know who's going first overall. There's a lot of trades that happen that time too, you know, like oh you know someone trade their their you know third round pick for whatever. But uh, something that's really really blown me away in the last little while is the Nuggets streak. They've pushed their streak to 15. Yep. Now, in I'm that in Denver. Time, I'm in Denver. Now, in that time, they've they've beat the Thunder twice. I know. I ac- I've mean, actually watched both those games. So, yeah. It, it's just unreal to see them do something like that. And you know, it's they're not they're not a Miami Heat. They're not they're not a Los Angeles Lakers. They don't have you know this giant powerhouse New York Yankees team. You know, they're mm-hmm. skilled around perfectly. It just phenomenal to see them playing like that yeah, yeah i mean sure. they they always talk about on like the big sports networks and how denver doesn't really have a star so how are they able to do this because you see all these other teams in the nba that have these giantly massively popular amazing players and the nuggets miami. don't really have that <laughs> yeah miami <laughs> definitely miami uh but you know there are other teams i mean you talk about the thunder the lakers are always one they always have kobe they always have somebody else who is supposed to be great. Yeah. Steve Nash, yeah, definitely. Nash Dwight Howard up here. and Dwight Howard. You know, that was my favorite thing because I have a lot of Lakers friends, and they are like, "Oh yeah, once we get Dwight, look out, LeBron, here we come, bro." Yeah, blah, yep. blah, 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 oh, blah. yeah, and it yep. never happened. Eat it, eat it, eat it, See, eat it, eat it. I feel bad for Nash because the poor guy is reaching the end of his career, and he's like, "I'm just going to go down and get a championship," and it's totally yeah, not like and that. It didn't happen. I know, and he deserves one too. Like oh, he sure. really does. Yeah. Now, I'm... a question, a question I've always been wondering is, I'm a Raptors fan. Like Toronto Raptors are my favorite NBA team. They have been since I was four. I'm dead serious. <laughs> nice. Are they a big deal up there, or are they just kind of eh? They're there, but people don't really care. The further In west Toronto. you go, yeah. The further west you go, we just don't care about basketball. We had the Vancouver Grizzlies for an unfortunate yeah, couple forever. of years, and it was the when your best player is big country. <laughs> like we're, we're, you could tell we're Canada it was Canada's like little little brother team because we we drafted a a guy that should probably be playing hockey cuz he was fat. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so Yeah, no, in Toronto it's a lot bigger, you know, like um I remember, you know, being a huge Vince Carter fan when that came around, you know, like a lot of the stars they brought in have made, you know, big big uh <laughs> Attendance boosts. Sorry. There you go. And uh, there you, you go. know, and, and seeing you know Chris Bosh go away. You know, I don't think Chris Bosh is a great player on by any means. I mean, I totally believe that LeBron and and Wade are just like, all right, come on, Chris. You know, oh, <laughs> yeah. here's eighteen points. Tugging him along. Exactly. You know, I think they could Let's do get it up there to twenty points tonight, Chris. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so man, I, I gotta have my numbers to impress the ladies. Yep. If, if I'm gonna watch basketball, it's gonna be hopefully the Heat losing. Or uh, watching the playoffs, man. I'm always waiting for playoffs. The playoffs for are sure, on. Yeah. It's really hard to turn anything off. So, 
Yeah. I just like to see the bad teams win every once in a while. Like, every time Washington wins, I'm like, yes, go Washington. <laughs> Dude, every time the Raptors win, literally. Like, that's... Yeah. yeah. Oh, my gosh. We got Rudy Gay, and we started to do great. Yep. And then I do not know what happened. It just went <laughs> south for the winter, man. I don't, I don't know if the weather was too cold up there for him. I don't, I don't know what's going on, but it, it's, not, it's not looking good right now. Well, much Isn't respect it? for you to be a Raptors fan. I, I, yeah. I, I really well, appreciate that. And admit it. <laughs> yeah, and admit it. Yep. I went to a Raptors Nuggets game last season, and I swear on my life, I was one of two Raptors fans there. I had my Raptors hat, I had my Raptors shooting shirt, I had my Raptors socks, I had everything decked out, and everybody was kind of looking at me like I was like loopy or something. Like, why would you wear Raptors gear? Because like, literally nobody else there was wearing Raptors stuff. So, I mean, it was kind of a far fetched idea for some people for me to be actually rooting for them. And, of course, they lost. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sure you ensued a lot of uh, a barrage of, a lot of comments. And, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Heckling and for sure, for mm-hmm. sure. Yep. So if anybody, yeah, any of the listeners out there that has been following March Madness, uh, I'd like to th- throw down your pick. Throw down the winners because we know who's kind of left now. I, I want to see if someone can uh, make the right call. Because to be honest, I think everybody that I've talked to about this, their bracket is completely screwed, and they're just nothing but angry. <laughs> yeah, even even the big ESPN guys, all their brackets are yeah, done. Totally. Yeah. Totally. All right. So, uh, keeping with uh, "Tell Me I'm Wrong," awesomeness, uh, we want to cover some food, and uh, yeah, we were kind of on the fence of what to talk about because it's one of those things where we've talked about a lot of gross things, and the best part when you talk about gross things is people hate stuff. But maybe it's time to talk about stuff that's awesome. And uh, sushi came up, and all I can say is I love sushi. Uh, I will also say I love sushi, and I'll even eat it sometimes at Safeway if I have to. And <laughs> oh gosh, A bomb, you're a baby. <laughs> you're not here to defend yourself, so I'm, that's all I'm going to say. Yeah, if you if you could have been on the show, he could have talked to us about how much he hated Safeway sushi. I just I laughed. We all went to the Safeway once just to grab a cup, a, a quick bite. <laughs> And me and, me and uh, AK were like, oh, sushi. This this can't sure. be too bad. And, okay, look. Made fresh last weekend. We went to Safeway. You know the sushi's not going to be epic. But I would say it was passable. Anyways, yeah, if, if A-Bomb was here, he'd be just... just Losing it. Oh, oh my God, you got to be kidding Infuriated. me. <laughs> but that being well, said, I, I've had great sushi. I will sushi. say this. The only people who don't like sushi are the ones who have never tried it or had, like, a bad experience with it that, like, scarred them forever. Because sushi is one of those foods where everyone at one point agrees that they like it after they've tried it at least once. Yeah, mm-hmm. and you have to be really careful when you're talking to, a, like, a noob on sushi. If they, like, <laughs> you don't you don't give a, a new person a sushi experiment from Safeway. They, no. That's not what I do. You, you have to take no. them to the restaurant. You need to order for them because you can always tell a sushi noob when they're like, oh, a scallop? Like a piece of scallop sushi? That sounds awesome. And you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> it's not fried. It's not put yeah. in. <laughs> I know. They're like, oh, tuna. I love tuna. Well, you probably like tuna when it's cooked. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I think people hear, I, people hear raw fish or raw seafood, and they just hear the word raw, and that's like a big turnoff for people. So, It's one of those negative thoughts that you have uh, affiliated with foods. You know, like, yeah. for instance, myself, I'll never, I'll never drink goat milk. I don't know why. It just sounds weird. It doesn't sound natural. Oh, I've had but, goat milk. But uh, my girlfriend has ordered uh, a goat cheese and spinach dip from a restaurant here. And the first time, like, I didn't even ask for what it was. I was just like, oh, a dip. Oh. It's like, oh, this is pretty good. What is it? She's like, oh, goat cheese. And I was like, oh, whatever. And just kind of went with it. You know? And uh, But I know myself, you know, I'll never do goat's milk. But That could change. You're just not old know. enough, maybe. <laughs> no. So the doctor says I have to. <laughs> <laughs> I love sushi when it's like, uh, uh, like my, my favorite rolls is at a restaurant that has a, there's avocado placed on top of the sushi and there's a piece of mango in there with a little bit of fish. And mm. uh, I will always go for a Philadelphia roll. So oh, Philadelphia good. rolls are great. Yep. No, my favorite is spicy tuna rolls. Like you can yeah. never go wrong with those. For spicy sure, tuna yeah. is just the greatest. That's definitely one of the rolls I always order. Uh, since moving to the valley here, I did try, uh, what was it called? A calamari roll. So calamari, which is squid, but 
in the sushi. It was to die for. It was probably my favorite new roll that I've tried. And every time I've gone back, it was like, oh, it was just you know a seasonal thing. It's just a seasonal thing. So this summer we'll have to go. Was uh, the calamari deep fried? To... Uh, yeah. Okay, that would probably be good. Like any tempura rolls are amazing as well. Oh yeah. Oh definitely. Yeah, so, I'm oh, definitely a big back then. If you're a sushi noob out there and you've never had it, literally get on to like Urban Spoon, find one of those websites that review it, find the best sushi restaurant in your area, and just go for it. When someone when people talk about raw fish and seaweed, they don't know what the hell they're talking about. No. <laughs> try, try a California roll. For starters. Try, yeah. try a spicy tuna roll and try something like a TNT or a Bakudan. It's, lots of places have different names for it, but it's it's cooked and it's got like the, the tempura flakes on top, which are just awesome. Yeah, it will be the best 50 to 100 bucks you ever spend in your life. I guarantee you. <laughs> All right, awesome. so being in the, a town area where there's lots of restaurants, everything's within a nice vicinity, um, I think AK has got a little something to say about delivery. Oh, unreal. I live 10 minutes from a restaurant that my girlfriend and I always order from for delivery. It's like, oh, we're tired on a Friday or a Saturday. What do you want to do? Oh, I'll just order. So we get it ordered. And sometimes they're there in like 20 minutes. Bam, food's piping hot. Sometimes it takes an hour and a half, and I've called, and they're like, oh, we came, and yeah, there's no one there. I was like, well, I've been home the entire time, so... I just can't believe how it varies. Like I literally, live, I can walk there in eight minutes. No <laughs> maybe, lie. Maybe you should. <laughs> yeah, you should just walk, just storm down there and like storm into the restaurant and start that screaming. <laughs> so like, you know what? I'm going to order so I can test this. So I can go down to that restaurant and give that manager a piece of my mind. Hey, <laughs> your delivery service system sucks. I always it always blows my mind how many times I forget to look at what they've delivered before I pay them and get them out the door. Because I always take, like, if it's pizza, I take the pizza, I put it on the table, and I go back to the door to go pay yeah. them. And the most epic, like, I work on the road a lot, so I ordering pizza is just, like, a regular. And yeah. so, like, the most epic, like, delivery ever was the guy was at the door. I brought it in. It felt really heavy, like, whatever. And the guy's, the guy's already downstairs in his car, and he's gone. And I open up the box, and the entire pizza is, like, jammed into the corner. He obviously dropped it. Everything was oh, just a God. mess, and I basically just <laughs> ate handfuls of like ingredients, cheese and sauce and ingredients. Oh, and That's I'm like, awesome. come on, with a with a spoon, yeah, with a spoon. spoon. Nope. Like, you know, you dropped it. Like, come yeah. on. <laughs> at least say something. Like, hey, man, I'm really sorry. Or like that. I know this. Was I was just taking his five dollar tip and running. Well, that's exactly. just it. And that was my biggest piss off. Is I tipped the guy. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Today's delivery was even better. He gets here, hands me a bag. He's like, Oh, did you have anything weird like salad or like that? And I'm like, Weird. Why is salad weird? <laughs> then I got inside and weird. Like, keep it keep it probably, you know, separate from all the hot food, keep it cold. So. See, that's the other thing I wanted to talk about. Like good segue, tipping. Okay. I don't, I don't consider myself a cheap guy. I think nope. I'm rather generous. <laughs> But I'm kind of sick and tired of every fast food place, every booster juice, Jugo juice. Like, it has a tip option when you pay. And I'm like, okay, I know. You, you put some ingredients in a cup, you hit the blend button, and you gave me my drink. Like, I know. Like, this how is hard fast, is that? This is fast food. I'm not sitting down. You're not giving me any type of good service. You're not encouraging me to spend more in the restaurant. I, like, you should, be, you should be almost a salesman as a server. And if someone's like, Hi, can I take your order? Oh, why aren't you going to tip me? I feel, I honestly feel guilty all the time, especially going to Booster Juice. That's the worst one. Yes. Especially it, those people, you can tell that they totally hate their job and they're totally <laughs> unenthusiastic. Unenthusi like, literally, I went to Cold Stone. It's an ice cream shop. Yep. Yep. Down here when I live. And the guys in there were so entertaining. Like, when the guy was scooping my ice cream, he, like, threw it up into the air, and he, he caught it in the cone, and, like, all this other stuff. And I was like, you know what? I'm giving this guy a $5 bill. Like, this guy deserves a tip. Like, you have to sell yourself in any place you want to get money from people. You can't just ask and receive. And that's why I it's so awkward. Ice cream juggler. <laughs> when it's so, so awkward at a restaurant when, like, you, you, you walk in. You, you have your meal, and the worst is when the waiter or waitress stands over your shoulder when you're punching in the interact Hey, stuff. you going to give a tip? Yeah, and you're just kind of like, this is so awkward. But yeah, I'm just so sick and tired of like, I literally was here for five minutes, and you made a drink for me. Like, And the, that's the other best part. Like, you get a booster juice or whatever, a, a smoothie of some sort at some restaurant. It's already eight bucks or something ridiculous. Yeah. And you're like, yeah. so what did I pay for? Like, <laughs> 
Yeah, definitely overpriced. Uh, I got another good food topic for you guys. One of my favorites, uh, deep fried pickles or frickles. Thoughts on them? I love them. Love Fantastic. Them. If you haven't had Best frickles, tried. get out there and have some. <laughs> have you had to have them, Raptor? Have you ever tasted the deep fried pickles? Nope. Never had one in my life, so I'm 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 just gonna stay out of this one because <laughs> I, I'm like I'm the fried pickle noob. I have had I've always hated pickles my entire life. It took me forever to like even just have enough energy to like or have enough courage, sorry, to pick up a pickle out of a jar because for me it's just like sitting in its own little cesspool of pickleness and eat one. <laughs> uh, but I gotta say, if someone would have introduced me to frickles before pickles, I would be the biggest like fan Pickle of fan. all time um yeah there's a couple there's a little burger joint here in on the west coast that uh just currently have them as like a promotion and cool. man i must have ate me like i don't know i must have ate me 15 boxes of frickles <laughs> i must have ate me 50 pickles frickles no the first time i ever tried them uh i went out with my volleyball team from the province that i'm originally from and the restaurant there that's what they're one of their appetizers that they're known for what they had and they're we're talking what we're gonna get you know and one of the girls was like oh yeah we're, oh, we're gonna order of frickles i'm like what like pickles she's like no deep fried pickles i was like what you're crazy. off the top of your mind it sounds disgusting though exactly like, and then trying it it's just like oh my god these are awesome these are yeah. awesome so let us oh. know if anyone has had frickles out there because there's got to be more fans there just has to be I have a okay. deep fryer at home. I definitely am going to try that one day. Just cut up some frickles, pickles, sorry, throw you them in some batter. Fryer? Yeah, I do. Oh, I have a deep fryer at my house, too. There you go. You I, I never tried. deep fry anything. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely okay. going to try. I'll definitely, I'll definitely deep fry some frickles. Yeah. Awesome, guys. So, okay. Raptor, any other future plans for some new video stuff? What, what do you got going on as far as the rest of the year here? Um, The rest of the year, I don't know really what I'll be doing, but... In the future, I want to start a couple more series. Um, I actually want to start kind of my own "Tell Me I'm Wrong" type series on my channel, where you know I kind of bring people together and we do this kind of podcast. So hopefully, that's something you guys will be seeing in like the next month or two. I got to get it set up, got to get some people on it and stuff like that. But sure. other than that, it's just going to be basically the regular commentaries. Um, I joined a 12k uh, montage making clan, so I'll be doing a lot of edits for them, and those will be up on my channel. Obviously, sniping montages, maybe some red guns here and there. But other than that, it, it's basically just going to be commentaries. That's basically well, what I bring. Give the A team a buzz if you're looking for guests to be on whatever you're creating. Let us know. Um, it's also nice right, to have so another good. Mac user. Uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> Mac user. I, I know you're using Mac. And I respect that. Yep. Um, great to see. If you need any like. Uh, hints or tips on some Mac editing stuff. That's all we use right now. So sorry, PC guys, we're not against you or anything like that. But if I can say one thing, Sony Vegas sucks. And uh... <laughs> oh, it's garbage. Oh my god. <laughs> like I have a Windows computer downstairs. I tried to use it. Like I tried to take a tutorial online. I paid ten bucks for a tutorial online. Yes. Three minutes in, I was like, I am not using this under any <laughs> circumstance. Literally, like this is kind of embarrassing. But for all my commentaries that you guys see, iMovie. Yeah, iMovie all the way. We have iMovie and photo booth. Dude, nothing bad about that. You know why? Because it works. I have so many conversations with people on Twitter where they've worked for hours on Sony Vegas and it crashes. And their whole project's just destroyed. And they're just like oh, raging. I'm just like, hey, welcome to non-PC world here. Where we don't get viruses or any of those problems. Although there was a Trojan sent out to Max this week. But you kind of have to download it in order to actually affect you. So... <laughs> Oh, yep. I didn't get it. <laughs> it. Again, when was the last time you got a virus? <laughs> um, I've never gotten a virus on a Mac ever in my life. I also. Well, what, uh, go ahead. What security are you using? What kind of antivirus? Uh, none. <laughs> what? Yeah, um, yeah no. I, well, I thought you were going to ask me that question at first, and I was like, well, honestly, I don't use anything. Um, <laughs> don't, use download, don't download suspicious stuff. Other than that, you're good. Literally, but actually, I have downloaded. Um, my Firefox, which I usually use for like my regular browser, it normally has a option to like download a YouTube video. So like if I want to use the song or something like that, or kind of repeat what a commentator saying in my video, that wasn't working for me. That little download button just wasn't working. It was like glitched out or something. So I went to some random website that I wasn't sure if it was secure or not. Just hit the download button, and nothing ever happened. I 
I don't know if it was like an actually safe site, but it looked pretty suspicious. But I was kind of like, I need to get this video out today. So, well, a quick notice: like, the latest Trojan out for Mac, and there are there have been a couple built. Uh, the only way that you're going to get it is if you go to a shady video site and it asks you to download a plugin to watch a video. Now, everybody knows that that's not required on Mac. As long as you're running um, a Flash type thing from older videos, and as long as you have just the standard either Chrome or Firefox, it's going to play those videos. So if you're ever prompted to download a special plugin that you don't recognize, don't go for it. Other than that, I really can't report on any other viruses. Uh, I also have an old Lenovo laptop downstairs that if I, <laughs> if I want to hate my life, I open it up and I try to use it. <laughs> and uh, the best part about opening up a, uh, a PC after you haven't used it in a couple months is opening it. Windows comes up and says, uh, downloads are required. Uh, and it will take about eight hours, and I'm just yeah. like, okay. Please and spend three days of your life waiting yeah. to use your computer again. We hope you enjoy using our services. And we'll also quiz you in between, If are you sure you want to update the next update yeah. so that you got to wait another eight hours, and then obviously it always restarts in between, and oh, I oh, love God. it. Then you're forgetting Java update, a useless <laughs> oh. Windows update. Then your Adobe update. Flash needs to be updated. You know, there's a new update for all these games that you have on it. There's a new no, update for no. Firefox. There's a new update for everything. It's yeah, just exactly. not good. This is why I'm excited for the Steam Box. We'll talk about that more as more information comes out. That could be really cool because it is run over Linux, and if anybody knows anything about Linux, is you can do whatever you want with it. They can make it super clean. As long as there's no viruses, I will be on board. But uh, yeah, that brings us to yeah. the end of the show. Uh, I would really like to thank Raptor for joining us. Uh, he's yeah, been absolutely pleasure. Guys. I'd be nice to ask him on again. Uh, AK, what else you got? Oh, I just want to say thanks again, again to Raptor for coming out. Um, also, in the next coming weeks here, I'm going to do a couple videos in regards to some of the hockey that I've been participating in. If anyone hasn't heard of it, check out the VGHL, uh, the My Video Gaming Hockey League uh, online, and check that out. And, uh, yeah, hopefully we'll talk to you guys soon. Right on, guys. So, yeah, thanks for joining us. And for everybody listening out there, uh, again, we're back. We're going to keep this going on a weekly basis again. Thanks for coming back and listening to us. And check out our other videos, and uh, we'll see you on the next video. Yeah, see you later, guys.